Hi, my name is Jacob Rockwitz, and this is a screencast to highlight three new features included in the latest release of the Web4 module for Drupal 8. The first feature I'm going to show you is the settings tray. That's included in Drupal 8.3. You have to enable the module. This is an experimental module that improves the user experience, specifically meant for the front end when you're editing blocks, but it also can be used in the back end when you're administering web forms. I'll quickly show you how it works. Now previously, before I do the demo, when you click Add Web Form, it would open up a dialog, or if you edit elements, they would open up dialogs. Um, that's the common pattern in Core right now, and that's what this, this settings tray is trying to fix. Um, to show you how it works, and I actually can close this, it moves the dialog into a right-hand sidebar that you can quickly edit. It's a much cleaner user experience while you can still look at your content. Um, I can also show it to you when I click through to the contact form and go to the elements you can click edit and you can quickly go through and edit these elements and look at the data and you know the descriptions and what's going on I find it very useful for editing handlers because you can compare you know the the email addresses you can cl quickly click through um, I like this feature it's experimental but there's very little risk you can't really lose data if there's a problem you can file a ticket um, this is a new feature to core so they're still working on it but it, it, it really did creates a very clean user experience. Um, it does require 8.3, which will be released shortly in the Drupal community. The next feature I'd like to show you is, I'm going to close this out, is support for multiple values. Um, more than just select menus, and I'm going to just demo it. If we go over to the example elements, I scroll over to text area, you get the ability to add more than one value to the text area. It's very similar to how Fields API works, and as I scroll through, you start seeing you have autocomplete elements, email, numbers, it gets into URLs, we already have file support. This is the, I'm calling these basic elements with multiple value support. And it's all it is is a checkbox that you have to check off and you can start collecting multiple values. What gets more interesting is when we go over to composites and it starts bringing up multiple values for composites. This is a simple address field, but then there's a multiple address field and you can add in you can say I'd like to add two or three, and you can, you know, as you enter them, you can drag and drop them. And for the contact, you can lay it out. This wouldn't work in a table, so it just lays out as fields, and you can just lay out all the ten fields and edit them. And I'm also going to emphasize I'm trying to do this with sensible defaults. There's no reason to ever enter multiple credit card numbers, so you can't do it. Um, you could override things and do it, but I don't recommend it. This is a nice use case because it makes it possible to collect multiple URLs with titles which I'm calling links. And then you also get names, which is very nice to collect registration information and you can get multiple names. And enabling this feature is extremely easy. You just, I'll just show the checkbox. You would scroll down and check off multiple. And this will be disabled once you start collecting data to maintain clean data integrity between your submissions. Um, I like this feature. This is something I've been working on in the background for several releases. And finally, there's some front end way to show you this feature. And there's going to be some more improvements down the line. And just to quickly explain why it gets us in sync with Field API is now the data model behind the web forms is very similar to Field API. It supports multiple values with the delta. And we would start to be able to push these address elements into you know, paragraphs or other types of composite Field API elements. Um, the final feature I'm going to show you is actually, I personally like it because it just solved a very frustrating problem for certain users. And what it does, I'm going to create a submission for the test. It's multi-page forms. Problem was people were creating very large multi-page forms, like 20 pages, which is fine to fill out because sometimes that's what the user experience requires. You want to break it down into different pages and then let someone review it at the end. The problem is if you have to go edit this data after there's been a submission, so let's go look at what happens. If I go to edit, you can view everything, but when I go to edit, you have to page through all 30 pages to get to the last page or some page in, in the middle. Um, I added this all tab, and if you click on it, and we're just getting a prompt because I'm exiting, and it lets you edit all the pages at once, and you can use the expand all and collapse all, and you can quickly go through and edit your data, and the preview is still maintained. Just it's a nice little tiny improvement to the user experience of editing a multi-step form. Um, that's it for you know this demo of some of the key features in the latest release, which is uh, 8.x-5.x beta 6 of the Web4 module. 
please provide feedback in the comments below on YouTube. Uh, this is an experimental screencast. I'm just seeing if I can kind of help the user experience, your experience when you're installing a new release of the web form module and get you more familiar with new features coming out as, as I'm adding them. Uh, thanks for your time.